So you are your founder of ShareTrap. Uh, we talked to, uh, to each other quite some uh, some times. You, you, you can also watch some videos on my YouTube channel. But for the people that, that, that don't know what ShareTrap is, can you explain shortly what you are doing? Sure. So essentially, ShareTrap software helps entrepreneurs and organizations to create their own sharing economy platforms. So essentially, you can build something a bit like Airbnb or Uber or TaskRabbit with our software, low budget and quickly. And some numbers, so how long do you now uh, are uh, uh, operating? Uh, so we've been operating since uh, 2011, uh, though uh, we started with a bit different model and then with the current model we launched in 2014 and now we have uh, we are powering almost 800 of these platforms in 50 countries around the world. Cool. And we're here in, uh, in, in Berlin and over there is the Steward Ownership Conference. Uh, it's about a new way of ownership and also a way that the capital investment isn't, isn't uh, extractive uh, for, the, for, the, for the company. Um, so uh, you uh, launched a crowdfunding route last year where you also converted your company into a, a steward ownership company. Uh, can, you, can you give me some more information about how the process has gone? So from the moment that you were rethinking about your structure till you made the decision of uh, yeah, becoming a steward ownership uh, company. Sure, I, I think it all began when we started the company, uh, we, it, it was started as a social enterprise, we had a mission of like fostering the sharing economy and at that point we simply felt the sharing economy was purely great and it only had like good things for the world. Uh, later though became, we became a bit disillusioned as we learned about these uh, platforms like Uber and, and TaskRabbit and Deliveroo, even Airbnb, that while they were doing some great innovations, they were also causing certain problems for the society and we feel that we would need something, something a bit different. <clears throat> we, we would need to kind of like get the benefits of the sharing economy but not, the, not those downsides. So our mission became to democratize the sharing economy by essentially making this platform technology accessible uh, to everybody like so that people would have a choice so if they uh, if they would are not, not happy with the rules of some platform they could like instead like go create their own and so on uh, but when we went to around the world telling people about this mission really often we would hear like okay so what what prevents you from becoming one of them like what, what if share tribe is the next dead star giant platform that actually starts extracting lots of uh, wealth uh, once we grow to a certain size and, and the, the truth was that we at that point we really didn't have a good answer. We, we had a traditional startup structure, we had some uh, investors also and we realized that if we continue with that path at some point we need to give up the control uh, of the company if we continue raising more money and that's really not something uh, that we wanted to do. We, want, uh, we were also not at all interested in an exit and uh, so this was a problem so our, in, our uh, kind of like a what we wanted to do was not at all aligned with the incentives of the investors. So we wanted to develop um, a purpose-oriented company in the long term, whereas investors wanted to company that grows really fast in five years and then it's uh, sold or, or taken public. So uh, th these, these were the things that we are pondering about when we heard about then the steward ownership model uh, in, in 2017. And it fit perfectly because it was designed for companies like us that want to put the purpose before profits and, and want to stay in business for the long term. So that's, that's when we decided then to convert to this model. And then uh, because uh, how did you come in contact with this, uh, this new model? Uh, so my co-founder uh, Antti met uh, Derek uh, from Purpose, uh, uh, who is who, who are the organization who are who is like organizing this conference and developing the model forward. And we started the discussions with them. At that point, we were also considering fundraising. So uh, we already had this plan of doing equity crowdfunding, but the problem was how to do this fundraise so that it wouldn't jeopardize like our mission that we would actually keep the control of the company and, and that we could also communicate to all the stakeholders that we are not ever planning to sell the company or go public. And, and like they offered uh, us this opportunity with, uh, with steward ownership and, and, and ultimately also Purpose Ventures. Their investment arm also decided to invest a bit of money as part of our equity crowdfunding round. And <clears throat> I described uh, what, uh, what the model means like, but that was a really short introduction. So if I ask you, uh, what is the, uh, the, the model? Uh, yeah, there are, there are two main principles. Uh, one of them is that uh, uh, profits are means to an end. So the goal of the company is not to bring profit to the shareholders or maximize the shareholder profit, but instead those profits should be used for another purpose that is defined by the company. In our case, it's democratizing the sharing economy. So that, that's one principle uh, and, and then the other principle is that ownership equals entrepreneurship which essentially means that the company should be controlled by the people who actively work on it. 
So uh, in practice how we achieved this uh, was that first of all like we separated uh, voting shares and, and profit sharing shares in our company. So uh, shares with voting rights can now only be controlled by people actively working at the company. And then investors uh, don't get their return from uh, uh, from uh, ex exit like a company sale or an IPO because that's not never going to happen because we cannot sell the company any longer after this uh, transition as the voting shares cannot be sold. Uh, but instead, uh, and, and we are also not paying dividends in a traditional sense, instead we are buying back those shares eventually from the investors so that's how, how they will get their return. So you're separating <coughs> the voting sh shares from the ownership shares and you make sure that the, the voting shares are, are always with people in the, in the company. Uh, yesterday you also gave a, uh, a workshop over here and then you also said that there's also a B-share uh, where the uh, foundation, the, the Purpose Foundation, who is yeah, developing this model, also have always one vote in the, in the process. Yes, it, that, that's correct. So a big part of this uh, is that we want, wanted the, uh, the steward ownership allows us to make a binding promise to all stakeholders, our employees, our customers, to the society at large, that we will never sell out. Like if, even if we decided to change our mind three years now and say, oh no, wait, actually we want to do an exit, we want to do a big sale, we can no longer do that. This transition is really permanent and it's made permanent by giving one Vo uh, one share, uh, this called B share, to this uh, purpose foundation that is bound by its rules to veto any change that would attempt uh, to change this uh, this share stru structure to move the voting power out from the employees or, or try to sell the company. And within the model, you uh, you got different variables because yesterday you you, you did uh, the risk together with uh, with the, the the founder of Seal, uh, and they <clears throat> are based in in the US, so they also had some different uh, yeah uh, ingredients in the recept. So can you tell me something about more, uh, so which variables can you control as a student owned company and uh, uh, based on which variables did you make your decisions uh, to the model you, uh, yeah, you implemented? It? Yeah, I think the main, main important thing is that uh, so uh, the all the steward owned companies share the two principles which I mentioned. Like first of all that they exist because of a purpose and, and it somehow is defined in a legal form. Uh, and also uh, that there are other principle which is that the control is, is within the company and not for outside investors. But then uh, there are variables like how, how big can the payoff to the original founders be or what kind of like how the investors will get, they get their payback. It will be dividends, will it be a loan, will it be share buybacks or something else. So they, in these things like you can, you can create variable structures uh, based on how how, what are the local regulations and what are your personal preferences? And which uh, which variables did you uh, decided? So uh, an, an example here would be uh, how we decided on our own compensation, uh, compensation for the founders and also early employees. So basically we felt that uh, in the beginning uh, founders and early employees worked either like without any pay or with like a low, lower salary. So we also granted ourselves like a small number of, uh, uh, of uh, profit sharing shares that the company will eventually, once the investors have been bought out, then they, the company will also buy out some of our shares. So this is a way for us to get uh, also some returns from the profits the company is making, but those are capped. So uh, they only hit, uh, uh, after a certain limit, we can no longer get any more uh, like uh, revenue for ourselves from the company's profits. Then it's purely about uh, salary. And once all investors and like team members, uh, uh, profit sharing shares have been bought out, then the company will from then on use 100% of its profits only for things that advance its mission. Whether it's about like developing its own uh, functions or maybe investing in other steward owned companies, maybe donating some of that uh, the other way. And I thought the model was quite new <clears throat> because uh, the first time I heard from it was, uh, was via your crowdfunding campaign last year. Uh, over here there was a keynote by, by Bosch. They already exist for 130 years and they use the same model. Uh, so so why do you, th uh, do you think there is now some more attention to these kind of models uh, in this new yeah, really fast going on demand economy? Yeah, I, I think there's uh, some, some similar to this, this than, uh, than what uh, kind of like how the sharing economy when we like before sharing economy there was already sharing and, and these type of things were happening but then it was about like basically com uh, lots of different companies were doing this type of things like having a foundation ownership and, and things like this on their own 
uh, own, own fronts, uh, but nobody was really talking about this as like a joint phenomenon and giving it a name. And I think that this is important because now suddenly we can give this uh, inspiration to lots of uh, entrepreneurs who are considering about these things, but don't really, they are not really aware of these examples. So it's important that we can package this phenomenon like in, in some way so we can bring together lots of people in an event like this uh, where we can show lots and lots of, uh, of these examples of the phenomenon. So the thing itself is not new. Uh, obviously there are lots of uh, like these, these variables and like how to implement it in different legislations. So there are lots of innovation also happening that is making it easier than earlier for people to, people to do this, just like technology makes sharing easier in the case of the sharing economy. Uh, but, but, but yeah, definitely like an old phenomenon, but basically uh, it's, it's about kind of like a packaging in an easily accessible way so that it would be approachable uh, by, by a larger number of entrepreneurs. Okay, and <clears throat> the steward ownership companies I talked to right now, they didn't start from, a, from this model. Uh, you, you also didn't start from the model, you already had some investors uh, on board. Uh, so how did you convince your investors to transform the model to a model that would be uh, maybe less profitable on short term for them. Yeah, so uh, obviously this was not indie. Like when we started, we raised some money from more traditional investors in 2013, 2014. At that point, we also ourselves thought that we are going to be the next unicorn startup. We thought that, okay, it's enough. To, this, this way we can like pursue our mission. Only later we realized that if we don't combine that with the right type of ownership, like we might not actually creating be creating the positive change we wanted after all. So, so but but at that point we had already taken the investment. So, uh, basically it was about like us. Uh, our investors were super nice people. We had the discussion with them. We told them essentially that this is this is what we want to do. Like this is the path that we want to take. Uh, obviously, it, it was it did help that we still like hold the majority of the shares. So anyway, even if they would have wanted to sell the company at that point, they, they, it, it was really not not in their power. But but anyway, so and then we discussed with them like what are the different options. Uh, ultimately, what ended up happening is that uh, we uh, used some of the money that we raised this year uh, to buy back. Uh, a big part of their shares so they got some return immediately so they're still keeping a small share and then we'll get more returns later from our profits but this uh, made it easier for them to also like ac accept this transition to the new model okay cool and <clears throat> if there are uh, entrepreneurs now listening to this story and they think okay i think it is interesting but i'm not really convinced so what do you think is the for the uh, for the company and society the, the the most added value of the model and yeah uh, what can you advise them <laughs> Yeah, definitely. The, the big, biggest thing for me is, is still this kind of like really giving this uh, binding promise to all the stakeholders because uh, like lots of companies say that they are making the world a better place. But I think that people, uh, almost every startup these days is, is doing it almost to a point of a choke. And I, I think lots of people are like becoming disillusioned. And the thing is that most young people today, like uh, and any people, especially young millennials, they want to work where somewhere where, this, uh, where they feel that this is really meaningful work. And, and I feel that it's way easier to communicate that yes, you are really actually doing something that is positive, that is meaningful uh, with the structure, which makes it easier for you to find uh, employees. It also will make it easier for you to uh, you to kind of like uh, talk to customers when they dig. It's kind of like this similar than fa fair trade is for bananas. <laughs> so 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 this uh, obviously is a bit something similar. That they can really know. Okay, so because they have these principles, it it means that they they are probably. Uh, probably a good company so these are important things uh, obviously it's also like I've heard so many stories like uh, this in this conference alone I've heard stories from companies who like uh, raised some VC capital only to learn later that uh, or realize that the, their incentives were not aligned with the incentives of VCs so they wanted to develop a, like a social enterprise in the long term where VCs wanted like a short-term exit after a like, fast growth and, and they ended up like really badly and sometimes those companies went under like and in other cases like those founders were ousted so uh, and and those are really not uh, in in many cases like venture capital simply is the, not the right choice for the company and and in those those choices like going to steward ownership path is a way more way more sustainable path, path to the kind of life uh, that you want to live but ultimately i think it's about like asking yourself like what kind of what kind of life do you want to live like what do you want out of entrepreneurship and 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 if the answers uh, that that uh, that you come up with like are aligned with uh, what the stewardship model holds then i think it's a really good model for you okay great thank you very much thank you